Rub up your engines! JC says, me and Scotty did time in prison, he's a smart guy. Well, you must be in an alternative universe because I've never been to prison or jail. I never got caught for anything. <laughs> I spent most of my life fixing cars, you know. I'm busy working all the time. I don't have time to get in trouble. <laughs> when I was younger, I went to university. And hey, I always lived on campus. So, you know, you walked around everywhere. Kind of hard to get in trouble when you're just walking around. If you went out drinking, you're not going to get any trouble because you're just walking around in the snow in Canada. So, <laughs> Joseph Gardy says, what do you think of an SLK 55 AMG 2015 model, please? I got a customer with one. They're really fun to drive. But if you're the owner, you better have a lot of money. Because my customer that owns one, they pay me a lot of money to fix that thing. It breaks all the time. <laughs> I mean, one of those things, the shock absorbers are like 1700 bucks a piece, and there's four of them. you got to change them in pairs. You're talking about woo, moolah moolah. If you got the moolah and you want to spend it, you want to drive around that thing, go right ahead. But if you don't want to spend a lot of money, don't even think about buying that thing. They are endless money pits as they age. Rubus Peralta says, Scotty, I bought an Accord 2013 with a CVT with 90,000 miles. Should I change the transmission oil? Yes, but pay a professional mechanic to do it because it's very hard to do correctly. And you want to have it done correctly and you want to use the Honda fluid. Hondas are very particular about that. But I would have it changed by a professional because you don't want to take a chance with the CVT transmission. They are so super expensive to rebuild. Pay a mechanic who knows what he's doing using Honda Fluid. And I would do it then probably every 60,000 miles after that. RM. And he says, what can you do to tune up an old car with about 155,000 miles on it? I'm getting worse gas mileage than before. Just want to know if there's anything I can do. Thanks. You want to start with the basics. You want to make sure the spark plugs are good. Take out one and check it. The air filter is clean. The fuel filter is clean. You want to do the basic things. Now, if all that is done and it still gets bad gas mileage, then you got to get into the more complex thing. I have a video called make your car run better with a little spray cleaner and in that video I show you how you get two cans of spray cleaner they're different kinds and how to clean the fuel injection system. You try that one next because when you get further than that sometimes you have to either buy new fuel injectors or if your engine's wearing out and need a valve job, that gets very expensive. Always try the simple things first. And of course, cleaning the sensors that I show in that video are a really good way in a car that's older that has got built dirt build up on it. You haven't cleaned in quite some time. Zero says, Scotty, I'm looking to get a Camaro 2017 as a first car. How reliable is the V6? The V8s are their uh, money makers. And they're decent engines. They're fast. They're well made. The V6, eh, most guys don't want a Camaro with a V6. Now, if you drive it conservatively, I mean, what would be the point of buying a Camaro and driving it conservatively? But if you do, it lasts a while. The GM V6 engines have always been on the weak side that they used in the Camaros. I've had customers with them that the engines went out early or they burn a lot of oil. If you want a Camaro, you're really better with a V8 and not messing with the V6 because then if you're going to sell it later, you're not going to get much for it because they all want the V8s. Nobody wants to buy the V6 used in those things. That one gamer says, Scotty, I'm thinking about buying an old wait Toyota Tundra. What's your opinion on a 5.7 liter iForce V8 from 2007 to 2013? They're very strong engines if you take care of them. can last a really long time. Of course, that said, it's a big truck, it's a big engine, and they get really horrible gas mileage. <laughs> if you don't mind poor gas mileage, go out and buy it if it's in sh decent shape. If somebody had beat the heck out of it and didn't take care of it, of course, you don't want to buy it. It's, you know, the same basic engine that they put in the Lexus is their complicated engine engines and they're super expensive to rebuild if people finally wear them out so you want a guy like me to check it out before you buy it but they can last an awful long time if they're taken care of. Hunter Foster says hey Scotty have you ever worked on a hand crank Ford Model T before? Yeah when I was a kid in the 60s uh, one of the guys in Lewiston New York where my father's garage was and they had a Model T Ford that we worked on. We'd work on it. Matter of fact in the back my grandfather talk about a hoarder. This is in the 1960s. He still had Model T water pumps and mufflers in the back stored with all the parts. 
<laughs> when they finally shut down the garage, he ended up selling that stuff in bulk to a guy that did Model T parts. So, yeah, I worked out on there. Yeah, really maintenance high. Every winter, you'd have to tear the engines down, clean the valves. They're really, compared to modern cars, you know, they, they weren't reliable at all. Uh, but they were the first big sold cars, so a lot of people bought them. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.